All right, today we're going to talk about solving decimal equations. So they're a lot like what we talked about last with two-step equations, but this time they're all going to have decimals in them. Now, I want you to pay close attention to the first two problems because I'm going to show you two different ways of doing it. All right, I'm going to show you keeping the decimals in form number one and getting rid of the decimals in form number two. So let's start with keeping the decimals. All right, so here you can see we've done problems like this before. Now we just have a decimal. There's nothing really new here. Um, it just looks more confusing because it has a decimal. So we're going to start off by subtracting 6 on both sides. That gives me 0.5x on this side. These cancel each other out. And that makes it equal to 8.5 on that side. Now we're going to divide by 0 0.5, divide by 0 0.5, and x will be equal to 8.5 divided by 0.5. Move that decimal over, over, goes in once, and right there. So x is equal to 17. Again, we can check that answer by going 6 times 0.5 plus 0.5 times 17, that is equal to 6 plus 8.5, which is equal to 14.5, 14.5 equals 14.5, so we're good, so 17 is my answer. Now that's how we keep the decimals, don't do anything different, we just keep all the decimals, do the math. In this example, I'm going to show you how to get rid of the decimals, alright? So what we're going to do is actually, we're going to multiply by... The, large, the smallest number you get rid of all decimals. So you can see here, I'm at the tenths, hundredth, thousandths place. So I'm at the thousandths place in this number here. Here I'm at the hundredths place, and this I'm at the tenths place. So I need to go to the thousandths. I'm going to multiply each side by 1,000. This works because of the property of equality. I'm multiplying both sides by the same number. Now, 1,000 times 0.002n is just 2n. All right, move that decimal over three times. Here, I need to move it over three times as well. That gives me 30. And if I moved it over three times here, that gives me 800. Now, it looks like I have a normal two-step equation. The numbers are just a little bit larger than we're used to. So, I can subtract 30, subtract 30, and 2n is equal to 700 and 70. I then divide by 2, divide by 2, and n is equal to 770 divided by 2, 8, 16, 1, 0, 385. You can go back and check that if you substitute in n and the 385 there and add it all out and you'll see that you get 0.8. Alright, now this one you can see is actually easy to eliminate all the decimals. See we have a tenths place, tenths place, tenths place. I've multiplied both sides by 10. So times 10 and remember we're going to do it kind of like the distributive property. So we've got to multiply both items. So that makes 3g. 10 times 1.2 is 12 is equal to 27. I subtract 12 because it's not attached. So 3g is equal to 15. Divide by 3, divide by 3, and g is equal to 5. Now let's check it. 0.3 times 5 plus 1.2. 0 0.3 times 5 is 1.5 plus 1.2 is 2.7. 2.7 equals 2.7. That checks out. G is equal to 5. One more problem. Now I need to write it out so we're translating it from an algebraic expression to an algebraic expression and then solve it. So if I want to write it out, I have 0.45 of is oftentimes a multiplication word. So of 50 is means equals what number? So I'm going to go 0.45 times 50, 0.45 times 50. I have to add my zeros on the end there. If you're not sure what to do, uh, feel free to ask me that question. That's 25. That is 22. Move that decimal over twice. X is equal to 22.5. So that's our last type of example there. So you can see 45 of is multiply. 50 is what number? That's always a variable. 
Hopefully all this makes sense. Again, feel free to ask any questions anytime. I will see you guys later.